Hey YouTube, how's it going? Today I want to show you how to create a simple cryptocurrency wallet. Today the cryptocurrency we'll be using is Ethereum. Now this is super simple, we'll be done in like what, 8 minutes or something? So we're creating this simple little desktop app. It has a two address in send button and a create wallet button. Pretty simple. All right, so a cryptocurrency wallet is made up of a key pair. You have the private key and public key. The private key is used to sign and the public key is used to verify the signature. And this is how you put it on the blockchain and people know it's from you. So let's write that. All right, so we set up an empty Rust project. We import our cryptography library and we use the RAND feature so we can get a random uh, key pair. We also import anyhow error handling library. Next step is to set up a wallet lib file. Then we create our first function, which is the create key pair function. Make sure you have your imports in the file, your anyhow result, so you can handle the errors and the public key and secret key and rand. All right, so then we create the key pair as so. Result will be a secret key public key as a tuple. Okay, we have our result uh, from the function. Now we mod wallet lib into main and we use the create key pair function in main and then we can print out our result. Make sure we hold on main as part of the anyhow uh, library. And yeah, we can print out the key pair. There you go, work perfect. Okay, what we really wanna do is send money from our wallet to another wallet over the blockchain. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Warning, if you're trying to send large sums of money, I don't recommend it doing this way. Use like a secure app like Gridlock or some other to send large sums of money. All right, so how this works is our wallet communicates using the WebTree protocols to the blockchain network, in this case, Ethereum. Communicates to a node, that node is connected to all the other nodes and they confirm the transaction. All right, let's write that up. First thing we do is import this handy uh, Rust library called WebTree. We use it in our wallet lib.rs file and we create this function called establish web tree connection and basically we use the connection to the node that we want to communicate with. This function will take in a string which is the URL of the node we want to connect to and it will return a result of a HTTP web tree type. So yeah, let's write that into our main function now. And now we need to create the URL. We could create our own node, give it a URL and connect to that. But to save us some time, we will use this third party called alchemy.io. So we go on our website, we can sign up for free. Uh, we have to select Ethereum and then create a new app, call it whatever we want. And make sure the network we select is Ropsten and not Mainnet. Mainnet is using real Ethereum. We don't want to use real Ethereum just yet. While I have your attention, check out my Discord, check out my Twitter. I'll keep you guys up to date on different tips and stuff in Rust. And uh, yeah, you can follow other people who are trying to do similar things, chat about apps and things. All right. Okay, so we can put that in our URL and establish a connection to uh, that node. Now we go back to our wallet lib file and create this sign and send function. It will take the web tree connection the secret key and the transaction object. And basically you call a function that will take the transaction object, basically the amount you wanna send and the address that you wanna send it to and the um, secret key, It'll <clears throat> and it will assign that transaction object with the secret key. And we send it as a raw transaction over the blockchain using the web tree connection. Also note this function is asynchronous. To import Tokio in a minute, Tokio is this great library in Rust for uh, asynchronous programming. Now I'm just tidying up the imports and some spelling mistakes. Next thing we do is create the transaction object uh, function to create a transaction object. It will contain a to address, the amount we want to send and some default values and give back a, a transaction parameters object. Now we'll just write up a to address, um, just example so we can test this out and call our different functions. First our function to get the transaction object. Slight typo here, just ignore that. The await should be on the sign and send. But uh, what we're gonna do next is import the tokio library for asynchronous code. And you put it on main and it basically makes main an asynchronous function. Also add the async keyword on the main function. We add some missing imports. And now we add our sign and send function. And yeah, that will be basically it. Uh, with, with this, you can basically make a transaction over the blockchain.
So as you can see here, we moved the await onto the sign and send function. And we get the result and print it out. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You have to add an example address in here as well, in the to address part. Just take any address really. All right, and that works. The only thing is we have no money in the account, so it says insufficient funds, but it's sent over the blockchain and the blockchain rejected it because it didn't have any uh, Ethereum. But uh, that's it, it works. And once you put some Ethereum in, you can make transactions. If you actually want to send something, go Google Robston Fawcett and they will send you some play money. You just need to give them your wallet address. That's nice and all, but we want our desktop app to look something like this with a front end. So let's uh, do that now. So we import this library called FLTK first. All right, so let's uh, get all our imports into main and we create a default FLTK app here. You can check out um, FLTK Rust on YouTube. There's tons of tutorials on how to use this library. It's really powerful. All right, um, we comment out the old code and right about here, my recording froze on me, but basically I ended up writing all of this that you see here now. So put all that in and we should get this very basic uh, window. Next step, we have our create wallet button. We create our send button and we create our input for the to address that we want to send to. Uh, so we create all of those and we create a frame as well where we're going to uh, tell the user how many wallets they have and set it to zero at the beginning. And we also want to style these buttons, make it all look just a little bit nicer. I won't go into detail of how this works, but look up the FLTK um, tutorials, like I said, on YouTube. I basically took a lot of the ideas from there and just library a little bit, added some color, pretty simple. And uh, if we compile that, we now have something that looks like what I showed you at the beginning of this video. Pretty cool. Currently, the buttons don't actually do anything, so let's add some functionality. Um, in FLTK, you have a sender and a receiver, and you can basically have the buttons emit a send. So when the button gets clicked, it sends something, and then we basically loop through the app, and anytime something is sent, it receives it. And in a closure, you add all the functionality that you want, like to, you know, send a transaction and so on. So we're going to write that in now. So the logic here is going to be super simple. We're going to create an enum and depending on which button you press, a different enum option is selected. And then we have a match statement in the closure that goes, okay, a send button was clicked. Then we handle it this way or the, maybe the other enum option was clicked and we create a wallet instead. And it just listens out for those constantly. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Finally, we have it. And it'll also have something new. We'll put in a vector here. So the user can press the create wallet button more than once. You can create multiple wallets. Although the way we've written code, it'll only ever use the first one. But if you want, you can go yourself and edit the code that you can uh, use different wallets. I might be moving a little bit quick at this part, but all this code can be seen on my GitHub. It's public. Feel free to, you know, make pull requests on it, edit it, do anything you want. It's all there. Um, you can copy it directly from the repo. Yeah, so click it out. I'll leave a link in the description um, if the video moves a bit fast. And there we go, it's working. We have um, all these buttons, you can press them, create multiple wallets, enter an address to send to, and then send your transaction. Of course, it's gonna fail because we have, again, nothing in the account, but you can use the Robson faucet, top it up, use it, go wild. All right, that's it. All right, that was our cryptocurrency app. Smash that like button, subscribe, and you know, you know the rest.
All right, guys, peace out.